Hi guys, how are you? Uh, welcome to our new video. And uh, first of all, uh, like to thank you or thank all of you who have subscribed to our channel. Uh, it's because of you that we guys uh, get a very good feedback, and uh, we are motivated to share uh, the knowledge, share the skills, so that all of us together can learn more and uh, basically refine our skills. So thank you all of you, and do not uh, forget uh, to push the bell icon if you have already subscribed and if you have not subscribed till now uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can receive all the notifications thank you for that so let's get to our today's uh, video and the one disclaimer if you hear any uh, noise regarding the cartoons or any other stuff uh, apologies for that as you all know that most of us are working from home so our today's topic is uh, LG Radio Network Planning and we will discuss how to design uh, or how to plan an LG Radio Network. This is a very important topic and in bits and pieces it is discussed uh, in many ways on um, multiple channels but we need uh, basically to have a, an overview, a summary and uh, uh, you can say a road map where we can see that how an LG radio network is planned from the scratch and how uh, an, an LG radio network uh, uh, can be planned with different elements joined together. So the topics that are included in LG radio network design are as follows. The first step is basically defining your quality, requ quality requirements in terms of coverage and in terms of capacity. The second step is your prerequisites and the prerequisites are your network constants and we will discuss each of these as we go along in the video. The third one is your variables and your variables are your uh, the cell range that you are trying to achieve, the power control parameters that you are going to set and the load conditions of the network that are you going to set. The third, uh, the fourth one is link budget, uh, link budget is basically how you calculate the losses and the gains from the transmitter point to the receiver point. And link budget is one of the most important step when it comes to LT radio network design. The fifth step is your final values. And the values that you get out of uh, a basic layer radio network plan is your cell range, your site to site distance, and the constants that you have used to get those values. And the last step is basically the inputs that you're going to get into your software. That can be at all, that can be planet, or that can be any other step. And uh, the point I need to uh, stress is that usually the most of the importance is given to how to operate these software tools. But I will give you, uh, you can say, a very important advice that this is a very, uh, you can say, a very basic thing. Anybody can learn to how to use a software and you can basically learn that via manual or via anything else but you need to have a very clear understanding of these steps to use a software for LG radio network design. So let's get to our first point. The first point is your coverage and capacity quality requirements. So in terms of coverage we define a cell edge bitrate. Our coverage requirement is uh, the cell edge bitrate that we can achieve and with a particular coverage probability. The relationship between coverage probability and uh, the different radio network planning parameters I have explained in, uh, in, in another video. I have given the link in this video as well for that uh, video that can, uh, you can access to understand better. But the, f the requirement is that you have to have a particular cell edge bitrate with a particular coverage probability. That can be, nine. for example, you want to achieve 100 kbps or you want to achieve 5 mbps at 98% coverage probability. Then you have, this is your coverage uh, quality requirement that you will use to design your network. And then you have your capacity coverage and, and this of course will be for uplink and downlink. And then you have your uh, requirement for capacity. 
and the capacity requirement defines the amount of offer traffic that a cell or a network can handle within a particular time frame. For example, a network, uh, a network offers a traffic of 5 megabit per second. So we need to design or dimension our network so that we can handle that traffic. Or in other cases, sometimes the capacity is dimensioned in terms of a distance. For example, you have to uh, basically cater for 10 megabit per second with a, within a network a radius of 10 kilometer per square. So that is how uh, the requirements are set in the first part of your uh, planning or design phase. And in all of your planning phase, if you are doing it in the deployment or you are basically doing it your basic uh, network maintenance, these coverage and quality requirements will basically direct how you uh, dimension or plan your network. And of course, uh, with ongoing requirements, you can change these requirements as well. For example, if you are going for a capacity increase or you're going for uh, in further improvement in coverage, then you can of course uh, change these requirements. But these are the guiding principles and you need these values to plan the network. Second step is our prerequisites. The prerequisites are uh, your RBS, sorry for my Ericsson background, but you're basically the power, the transmitting power of your uh, receiver and your uh, transmitter. In case of a network, the transmitting power of a, of a transmitter is your radio network uh, base station and your transmitting power of your mobile station. For uplink, you will take the transmitting power of your mobile station and for downlink, you will take the transmission, transmission power of your radio base station. So this will be a constant that you will know. Either you're using 20 watt, either you're using 40 watt, either you're using 60 watt, but whatever it is, that will be a constant. Secondly is your transmission scheme. Either you're using MIMO, uh, single user MIMO, single input, multiple output, either you are using uh, multi-user MIMO, single user MIMO, uh, transmit diversity, receive diversity. This will also be a constant that will basically go into your calculations when you are doing your LT network design. And this will also direct how you basically interpret different values as you go on in your plan. The third thing that is very important is your frame structure. Either you are FDD, TDD, if you are TDD, what kind of frame structure are you using? Either you are using uh, uh, more uplink frames, more downlink frames, and what is your special subframe structure, the switching uh, subframe. So those things are also the constants. Uh, and ap apart from this, if you're using some, some tower mount amplifiers, the power of those amplifiers, and et cetera, et cetera. These are all, uh, you can say, the prerequisites or the constant values that go into your design. Third is the variables. Now, what we uh, need to understand about variables is that your, these three things are your variables. So you will vary these things to get to a balance and more optimal point for your LT network design. For example, this LSA is your cell range. So you will select a particular cell range that you want uh, your network to have then you select a particular P0. P0 is your power control target uh, in the uplink. In LTE, we have uplink power control. So you will, for a, and this is your uh, percentage load. Q, uh, percentage load means that how many of your uplink resource blocks are being used for uh, your physical uplink shared channel. So you, you do <coughs> use these two values so you can adjust your power control target you can adjust your uh, load of the network, and then you can basically adjust your cell range according to it. In a nutshell, <clears throat> if you have a higher uh, power control target, your cell range will be lower because you have more noise, noise rise. If you have a lower power control target uh, and a lower load of the cell, then you can expand your cell range. But you need to arrive at a cell range number, LSA, and this uh, cell range is in terms of attenuation. So in order to get the uh, frequency and everything out of it, we use it as an attenuation. For example, we want to have uh, attenuation path loss of 140 or 135 dB. And then with a particular power control target and with a, with a particular load target, we try to see if that cell range is possible. But these are variables, so we need to adjust these 
to get to a fine-tuned value. Then we have a link budget. Link budget is basically your losses from the transmission point to the receive point. For example, this is your receiver and this is your transmitter. <coughs> so all the losses and the gains in this whole uh, path goes is reflected in your link budget. For example, if you have got a particular value of this LSA, then your LP max will be equal to LSA plus your uh, fading margin plus your losses plus your gains. Now this LSA <coughs> is your cell range and the fading margins that you will add is for your shadow fading, for your fast fading, for margins for your noise rise, margins for your log normal shading, uh, shadowing, uh, log normal fading and etc and etc and all of these uh, margins are based on a particular value of power control target and your cell load. So you need to know that all of these margins are also coming from your power control and your cell load targets and these are the kind of things that we miss if we are only focusing on the input values for a software which gives you the LD radio network design. So link budget will contain all of these and this will both be in uplink and downlink. So once we have the link budget, we will know that either our network is uh, downlink limited or uplink limited. Most of the time our network is uplink limited so that the path loss in your uplink is greater than the path loss that we can uh, basically having in the downlink. So that uh, if you are having an issue where it is downlink limited, then you go back uh, to these values, LSA, P0 and QPCS, you optimize them and you try to basically arrive on another uh, set of values. So that is your link budget. Then you, that the last step is arriving on your final values for your uh, basically uh, link budget and in your link budget, then you will have your final values for your cell range in terms of attenuation and that attenuation you can basically convert it into your cell range into your site to site distance and that basically gives you an idea for example if you have an area of uh, uh, 90 kilometer per square then you have an idea then how many sites you will require to cover this idea uh, this area you can place them randomly or you can place them on uh, the points that your site acquisition already has negotiated and this is how you arrive on the basic uh, design of an LT network in the first place. Then we come to a very important point that is your software uh, inputs. And your software inputs basically uh, range in a different values, but the values that you get from these also go into your software. For example, the value for a particular uh, coverage probability and your uh, power control target and your cell load gives uh, the noise rise margin and that is included in the software uh, values. You have your uh, clutter uh, sh shadow fading margins, you have your fast fading margins, you have your log normal fading margins and that go all into your software and if you open it all or any other software that will also be there. Then the values that go into your uh, <coughs> planning software also include the reference, uh, the power reference when compared to your reference signal. So your PDCCH, your PSCH all have reference powers. So we will also, uh, we will also include uh, the reference point and that is uh, your uh, reference signal power is a reference point and in your software we have uh, uh, the reference power difference between the reference signal and all the other uh, resource elements. For example, PDCCH, your broadcast channel, your synchronization channel. So if you look into your ATOL or your planet, you will find something like this. PDCCH offset. And sometimes it is set to minus three, sometimes it's zero, most of the time it is zero. But this provides you the reference power of PDCCH in terms of your reference signal. Reference signal usually has the most power and then uh, the rest of the resource elements are allocated power according to this. In addition to this, uh, we have uh, uh, power allocation in terms of that the 
first all the power is allocated to your channels and the rest of the power is all allocated to your reference signal. In addition to the power uh, parameters, we have parameters for your frame structure, for your TDD, FDD, for your special fits of frame structures, your cell uh, locations, and then also we have parameters now in a software for your uh, carrier aggregation. And then your layered structure. In terms of carrier aggregation, uh, you can uh, basically uh, implement different kind of uh, carrier aggregation techniques, uh, contagious, non-contagious, and you can also basically uh, map them over your layered network. And then you can also uh, map carrier aggregation in terms of your offered service. For example, you can choose uh, carrier aggregation for broadband services, uh, for example, the QCI that are providing broadband services, and you can uh, basically not choose carrier aggregation for your best effort services, et cetera, et cetera. So when you run uh, throughput uh, simulations, these kind of things will be taken into consideration and your results will reflect that. Then you have your layered structure. Uh, in these days in LTE, you have layered structures, for example, macro, then you have your, uh, and this macro is providing your umbrella coverage. Usually if you are dealing only with LTE, then you can have your L7 or L9 providing the macro coverage. Then you have your L18, L21, L23, L26, which are providing your capacity. And in LTE, basically you, uh, you need to have these pico, micro, and macro cells to get the max out of the network. So in uh, network softwares, which uh, you use, you can um, give uh, the different layer names and then you can define offsets with your minimum RSRP in order to camp on a particular layer. So uh, in terms of uh, LT network design, you can use uh, the basic parameters that we got from the calculations. Then we put all the values in your uh, software and then we are on top of that, we use different kind of uh, techniques to simulate the network according to the network that we are, we are trying to dimension, we are trying to design. That can include carrier aggregation, that can include layered network structures, that can, and can also include your handover margins as well. So while uh, you are moving from one cell to another, how the coverage uh, will behave can also be simulated in the network. So this was our today's lecture. Uh, I hope uh, you have had a very good introduction uh, to LT network design. And as we move on uh, to our further lectures, we will explain each of these steps in detail so that uh, when we are uh, getting to end of our uh, planning phase, you have the complete uh, idea and the complete knowledge required to design a network and also to share it with your uh, colleagues. So, uh, do provide us uh, your uh, comments in the comment section and uh, if you like the video, please like it, share it with uh, your colleagues, uh, with the people you want to share the knowledge with and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. See you next time.